We sent our Mike Valerio 6,000 miles away to Japan to get a closer look at this super speed train. It's a streak of Quicksilver floating through the Japanese countryside. Full speed right now, 311 miles an hour. You're looking at the world's fastest train and a near copy could be coming to our area. It's like what we see here. Oh, here it comes. In the foothills of Mount Fuji, where our journey in Japan begins. So this is like when you're walking onto a plane in the airport, you don't see the train because it's like we're walking in a jetway. And then here we are. Let's go. In mere minutes, magnets lift the train from tires to air, four inches above the ground. Magnetic levitation technology. And here as we're standing up talking, we're going 50% faster than the Acela train right now. It's 130 miles an hour. Wayne Rogers is the American businessman who wants to privately operate a maglev from DC to Baltimore, eventually extending it to New York. We're accelerating and we're climbing, so it's almost like being in an airplane. We could walk around. You don't feel the acceleration, though. I think you, you to explain to people, you, you hear it, but you don't feel as though you're in a roller coaster ride and you have to hold on. You can only tell you're going more than 300 miles an hour by the vibration of the seat backs and the tunnel lights flying by. It's a quick trip that's over in minutes. We're slowing down at the moment because we're approaching a curve or uh, no, what? we're at the end. This is the end? Yes, we're almost at the end, so. I haven't even had a chance to drink my coffee. We're no, just I... shooting the breeze. After we hopped off the maglev and ventured through nearby towns on our own, we found the train has widespread support. So the vibe that we're getting from the people who live and work closest to the maglev is that it really isn't that big of a deal, that big of a disturbance. When you look at this place with your own eyes and just see the rice fields, the mountains, the greenery, it seems as though much of the natural beauty here is preserved. Yoshiharu Hurino works as close to the maglev as you can get, and he told us Americans should reserve judgment, since he says it only sounds like a gust of air when the train passes. <laughs> But a few miles away, Izumi Yamanaka tells us she's not sold on the science. Until we see legitimate scientific proof that the maglev is safe, that should be the first priority, she says. But the maglev has been tested here since 1997 with no adverse human health effects reported. I mean, we're here in Japan, and you've had an opportunity to ride the existing superconducting maglev train. Japan has some of the strictest safety standards, environmental standards, noise standards in the world. There are more questions from homeowners in Prince George's County. And then what attracted you to this spot? I mean, the houses are so beautiful houses. I, I want to so say that it was, it was what was probably going to be taken from us. Virginia Simmons has two twin girls, and her backyard borders a potential maglev path in Laurel. It's surely going to be affected by the noise, the vibrations, and nobody wants to look out their window at a, at a maglev train. Then there's Nichelle Shaw, whose Hyattsville home could sit above a maglev tunnel. All right, y'all, come on in. You know, it's not like talking about a fundraiser. We disagree about the tablecloths. This is people's homes. Something running under our house like that, is it going to damage our um, basements and our foundations? And if it does, will our homes be worthless? We asked Wayne about those concerns, starting with Nichelle's. What would you say to the people whose homes are above the tunnels for this project? Well, there won't be void vibration, there won't be noise. They will not even be able to know that that project is deep underground uh, below, their, below their homes. That's the goal, but the engineering plan to make sure there's no shaking hasn't been released yet. Both Nichelle and Virginia say their lives are in limbo, waiting for the federal government to approve or shelve this project sometime in 2020. It's hard to deny that Japan's investment is dazzling, but is this right for us? I think that the most important question that our audience is gonna to, going to wanna to know uh, is simply this, will this project be approved? We need this train desperately. I feel confident we'll get approval. We just stopped doing things for about 20 or 30 years. Let's leap over what we could have done, go right to the newest technology and build the future together. 
So the next steps here, well, by spring, we'll see some more details released talking about those potential vibrations and magnetic fields. Then we'll have the final public meetings. And of course, Leslie will let you know when those meetings are going to be so your voice can be heard when the final decision is made at the very end of 2020. Incredible work, Mike. Thanks so much. Yeah. And if you want to see if this train could be built next to your home, we got an interactive map and all of Mike's reporting on our website. Just go to WUSA9.com slash superspeed or check our WUSA9 app.